What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to explain the decisions of machine learning models using SHAP or Shapley in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to explain the decisions of machine learning models using SHAP in this video today. And SHAP stands for Shapley Additive Explanations. You can see this is not necessarily the most intuitive way to come up with the acronym, but this is what it stands for, and it's based on game theory. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on the theory in this video today, or actually, I'm not going to focus on the theory at all. If you are interested in understanding how SHAP works behind the scenes, let me know in the comment section down below. If enough people request it, I will make a video on it. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to focus today on the practical part and on the application of SHAP in Python. I also recently made a video about LIME, which stands for Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations, uh, which is also a way of explaining machine, lear uh, machine learning models that are not inherently explainable. Uh, and today we're going to learn about SHAP, which works differently. Now, some models like decision trees, for example, are inherently explainable. They have a literal decision tree that you can look at and it explains exactly how a conclusion is reached. So you get some data and then you classify it as zero or one as uh, good or bad as black or white, or as in this video today, malignant or benign, we're going to look at two more. Um, and the decision tree tells you exactly what the model does to get to the conclusion. It looks at certain values at certain thresholds and it says yes, no, uh, higher or less than greater than or uh, lower than some value and then it comes to a conclusion this is good or bad malignant benign whatever. And some models don't do that. Some models just give you the prediction. So for example, support vector classifiers, they will give you a zero or a one, they will not even give you probabilities, they will not give you feature importances, and they will definitely not explain the decision making process, they cannot explain the decisions, the individual decisions that they make. And in cases like this, things like Lime or SHAP are very useful. So what we're going to do first now is we're going to open up a terminal and we're going to install a couple of packages. First of all, of course, the SHAP package, which is for SHAP itself, then we're going to also need NumPy, probably also matplotlib, I'm not sure. Um, and we're also going to need scikit learn for the machine learning part. And then we can start by importing SHAP by importing NumPy as and P. And then from sklearn, we're going to import the data set. So from sklearn data sets, we're going to import load breast cancer, which is a function that will give us the data set. Then we also want to have from sklearn model selection, the train test split function, so that we can split our data into a training set and a testing set. And then from sklearn dot SVM support vector machine, we're going to import the linear support vector classifier, which is not giving us any explanations out of the box. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say x and y is equal to data, data, and data target. Then you can look at x, it's basically just the parameters and y is zero or one. So malignant is zero, one is benign, you can see that this is the case by just printing the target names. So data target names like this, you can see zero is malignant, one is benign. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to split this into x train, x test, y train, y test, this is going to be a train test split from x and y with a test size of 0.2. So 20% of the data will end up in the test set. So what we're going to do now very easily, usually when you do a linear support vector classifier, when you train a linear support vector classifier, you want to scale the data, it's not too important. Now we're just gonna uh, say classifiers equal to linear SVC. And then we're going to say classifier fit on x train and on y train. And we can actually then also say CLF dot um, score and we can score it on the x test and the y test data. And you can see we get 92.98% accuracy, probably this is going to increase, I assume if we scale it before, but it's good enough to to uh, for, for the purposes of this video today. So what we want to do now is we want to understand how does the linear support vector classifier make a decision because if I go ahead and I say CLF dot predict, 
I can of course pass an instance, for example, the first instance of the test set, and I'm going to get a prediction one, but it doesn't tell me how it gets there. It doesn't explain to me what exactly is happening uh, for this to be classified as uh, benign in this case as one. So what I can do now is I can do the following, I can say explainer is equal to shap dot kernel explainer. And what I pass here is first of all, the predict function. So clf dot predict. And I also pass a sample of the data. So I can say shap dot sample or shap dot k means we're going to do k means in this case, uh, k means basically summarizes the data uh, with centroids and sample just samples from the data. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pass from the train data, we're going to pass the train data and we're going to pass 10 to the k means function. Um, and then we're going to get the actual shap values. Again, not going to explain how exactly this happens now behind the scene, but we get the shap values from the explainer by doing explainer dot shap values. And we're going to pass the test set here. Now this is going to be calculated, as you can see, this takes some time. And of course, the larger your data set, and the more complex your data set, the more time this is going to take. But then we can very easily just produce a summary plot and the summary plot doesn't even focus on a single instance, it, it focuses on the classifier in general. So what we can do now once this is done, we can say shap dot summary plot. And we pass the shap values, we pass the test data set, we pass the feature names, which are going to uh, going to be data feature names. And um, then let me just see if we need some more parameters. No, I think that's it. Then what we get is this here. And basically, the idea is the following here, you can see on the x axis, we get the impact on the model output. Meaning if it's close to zero, it's not that relevant. If it's very much to the left or the right, it's relevant. So depending on the direction, of course, what you can see basically here, also the color indicates whether the value is high or low. And basically, um, this means that the worst area being high is an indication for this being classified as zero, whereas the worst area being very low is pushing the model towards classifying it as benign. Um, and it's the other way around here. So very low values indicate um, malignant and very high values indicate benign. So that is a summary plot of the whole thing already here, you can see how the features impact the model, but we can also go a step further. Uh, we can explain individual decisions. So what we do for this is we say shap dot init JS, this is just necessary here in the notebook to display uh, the plot, and then we can display a so called force plot, seeing how the individual features apply forces uh, to to uh, basically come to a decision. So we can say explainer dot expected value, then we're going to say shap values zero because we're classifying just one instance here x test zero. And then again, we get the feature names is equal to data feature names. And what you can see here now, now you cannot see all of this because unfortunately, uh, it doesn't it doesn't adjust this with a dark mode, but maybe you can see it in the video. If not, just believe me, it's there. Uh, you have some text here that is black on dark gray. So maybe you cannot see that. But it says here basically a couple of values. And then it says here, importantly, base value and base value is 0 0.6703. This is the uh, base value. And then you can see the individual features push the prediction towards something. So the worst area being this value here, pushes the prediction very far to the right, uh, towards a classification of one towards a classification of benign. And then this being that value also pushes it then some small pushes here, some large pushes also against uh, the classification of one pushing it more towards uh, malignant. But in this case, you can see here, um, that the left side is much larger. So this is how you can explain individual decisions, I can also change this now. Uh, to another instance, or to yet another instance, maybe we can get a zero somewhere. No, seems like we only get the ones. Hmm. Let's do one more if it doesn't produce a zero. Okay, doesn't matter. But you can see here now how you can explain individual decisions being made on individual instances. Now with all this, we can also generate a uh, 
some sort of feature importance. So what we can do here is we can say import or actually I have NumPy imported already, right? Yeah, uh, we can use NumPy to take all the SHAP values to summarize them to aggregate them basically, and to take the absolute value of them so that we don't really care about how it influences the model, just that it influences the model. And we can do that by saying mean absolute SHAP values is going to be equal to NP absolute SHAP values. And then we take from this the mean on axis zero. This will give us the mean SHAP values. And then we can take this and turn this into, uh, or we can display this as feature importances. So we can say feature names is equal to data feature names. And then we can say uh, feature importance is zipping together the feature names and the mean absolute chat values. Um, and then we already should see. Okay, actually, we would have to turn this into a dictionary to see um, the feature importances. But now we can also sort them. So what we can do is we can say, um, sorted feature importances is equal to sorted feature importance. And the key is equal to lambda x, and we sort by x1, reverse being equal to true, because we want to have from highest to lowest. Uh, and then actually, we can just what does it look like right now? Sort it. Come on, where's the autocomplete? Uh, this does not look like it worked, did it? Not sure about this. Oh, there you go. Um, and now what we can do is we can basically just iterate over it. So we can say for feature and importance in sorted feature importances, print, and then just feature importance. And you can, of course, uh, turn this into maybe we want to have a colon in between like this. But that is basically now our feature importance. So this is um, how important the individual features are the most important one being the worst area mean perimeter and so on. And this is all on a linear support vector classifier that doesn't provide probabilities doesn't provide feature importances and doesn't provide any explanations of how it gets to the conclusion, you can explain models like this, but also of course, uh, random forest classifiers and uh, basically all the different kinds of models you can explain with Shapley like this or with Shap like this. Uh, yeah, this is a very nice thing and a very nice uh, alternative to line. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.